On this channel, we've done several projects that take an original Game Boy Color and convert it to a form factor that never existed. We made a Game Boy Color Pocket, DMG, and even a consoleized version with an HDMI port so that we can play it on the television. Now, arguably the most comfortable Game Boy ever created is the original Advance, with its horizontal form factor. So, a modder by the name of LEGO My Frogo created this, the Frog Boy Color, a sort of merger between the Game Boy Advance and the Game Boy Color. So, let's take a look. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Tito and welcome to another episode of Retro Renew. Today we'll be taking a look at a really cool project that changes the form factor of the Game Boy Color to one that more closely resembles the original Game Boy Advance. This is the Frog Boy Color, a project created by a talented modder named Chris who goes by his online alias, Lego My Frogo. He's an avid Game Boy Color enthusiast and makes some pretty fantastic mods for the Game Boy Color, which he sells on his store, which I'll have linked down below. While I think his mods are great, it's his reimagining of the Game Boy Color that really drew my attention. Now, if you're a longtime viewer of the channel, then you've seen some of my previous videos covering projects by another modder named Bucket Mouse, who also has adapted the Game Boy Color to fit inside the shell of a DMG and a Game Boy Pocket by way of transferring the original Nintendo hardware to a custom-designed motherboard. Now, Chris takes the same approach, but goes an extra step. He too takes the original Game Boy Color components, like the CPU, RAM, and Crystal, and transfers them over to an all-new motherboard, which in this case has a horizontal orientation. He then goes so far as to make an all-new custom shell to go along with the motherboard, resulting in this beauty you see here. Honestly, the completed build looks stunning, and I can't wait to share it with you. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna go over all the parts you'll need to build your very own Frog Boy Color. Then I'll show you how to put it all together, go over all of its features, review the pros and cons, and of course provide you with my overall thoughts. So the first thing you'll need is the custom motherboard, which brings me to the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. Now what's awesome is Chris actually uploaded this project to the PCBWay website, so it's really simple to order. And on top of that, he also added the bill of material so you can actually have PCBWay build the board for you, which makes this project so much easier. That's what I did here. You can see that all the necessary components are already soldered to the board. This would have been an incredibly tedious project if you had to place all the tiny surface mounted components yourself. So to get this board pre-assembled like me, all you need to do is go to the project page, which I'll have linked down below, and then go over here to the right part of the screen and select PCB plus assembly, and then add it to your cart. But we're not done yet. You'll also need to make sure that the board thickness is set to one millimeter. And then change the assembly side from the default top side to both sides. Once those changes have been made, select the calculate button at the bottom of the screen and then save to cart. Here you can see that getting the boards pre-assembled isn't cheap at around $95, but it definitely will save you time and effort. Okay, so that's the motherboard. Now let's talk about the shell. The one I have here is CNC machined from a block of aluminum and then anodized into this beautiful gray color. This was also made by PCBWay using their machining service. It came out fantastic, but if you do want to go the metal route, make sure to get the screw post tapped for M2 screws. And on the topic of screws, you'll have to pick up a set like this if you want to go with the metal shell. You're interested in the M2 screws that are between 4 and 6 millimeters. Now you can also get the shell made in regular 3D printed materials such as clear resin, which I think looks pretty amazing. For those types of materials, you can just reuse the Game Boy Color screws and don't need to bother getting the machine ones. When gathering all the parts for the Frog Boy, make sure to check out Chris's GitHub, which has all the 3D files that you'll need. The only other items that I got printed are the two internal battery brackets and the volume wheel, which I got in machined aluminum. Now the Frog Boy Color utilizes buttons and membranes from a Game Boy Advance SP, so you'll need to pick some of those up as well. I got these aluminum SP buttons, which surprisingly match the color of the shell, so I think that'll look pretty cool. 
And lastly, you'll need to get yourself a laminated Q5 IPS kit, which I picked up from Retro Game Repair Shop, along with the buttons and membranes. So that's everything I got to build the Frogboy color. A huge thank you to PCBWay for sending this all over and for sponsoring this week's video. I'll have links to everything, including the project page down below. So without any further ado, let's start building the Frogboy color. All right, to start things off, let's first remove all the components we'll be needing from our donor Game Boy Color. This includes the CPU, RAM, crystal, cartridge connector, and link port. I'll be using a combination of hot air and my desoldering gun to make quick work of this. All right, here's the RAM, CPU, and crystal all removed. Now let's tackle the cartridge connector and link port. Next, we'll need to use one of our batteries to test the Frogboy motherboard. We'll need to remove the JST connector, but don't just snip it off. You'll want to cut the positive and negative wire separately so as to not cause a short that could cause damage to the battery or cause injury. So be careful and again, snip each wire individually. Then go ahead and connect the battery to these two points here. Positive to VCC and negative to this ground pin. And you'll see that our power LED starts to illuminate. We'll first test the 5 volt rail to ensure we're getting the appropriate power. And it looks good. Next, we'll also check the 3.3 volt rail, which also looks good. I highly suggest checking out Chris's GitHub, which details the entire build and also all the test points. Great, now let's remove the battery and then reinstall it to the other side of the board where the battery pads are located. We'll first test to see if the power button is working. With the console off, check the VCC1 pad and we can see that we're not getting power, which is a good sign. Now when we turn the console on, we'll see the LED illuminate, which is good, and that we're getting about 4 volts, which is well within the range we should be seeing. And then checking the adjacent SW VCC pad, we should see a constant 4 volts no matter if the console is on or off, and we indeed do. So it looks like everything is working perfectly on the fully assembled board from PCBWay, which is great news, and we can go ahead and begin to solder in our Game Boy Color components. Now coming from the PCBWay factory, there is some residual solder on these pads, so we'll definitely want to remove it before soldering in our components. I'll be using some desoldering braid to accomplish this. Once all our pads are clean, we can now solder in the CPU, RAM, and our crystal. This is definitely a challenging task, so take your time.
awesome. This is what everything should look like once fully installed. And to make sure everything is working properly, let's hook the battery back up, as well as our LCD panel. And would you look at that? This is a very good sign that things are going well. So now we can go ahead and proceed with the rest of the install. So let's remove the battery again and then solder in the cartridge connector. All right, with the car connector in, now let's go ahead and install the link port connector. I went ahead and trimmed the pins flush before soldering so that I got smooth rounded fillets, as opposed to trimming the pins after, which would leave sharp edges. We need the pins to be as flush as possible so as to not short on the metal shell. Next, we'll need to prep both speakers by soldering two wires to them. And then, before assembling everything together, I went ahead and placed a double layer of Kapton tape over the trimmed cartridge and link port connector pins to prevent any potential shorts. Now, go ahead and grab the front shell and install the laminated IPS screen. Great. Once that's done, drop in the buttons and membranes, followed by the two speakers. Next, carefully drop in the motherboard into the front shell. and then using two six millimeter M2 screws, secure the board on either side of the cartridge connector. Then solder in both the left and right speaker to the appropriate pads as shown. And then solder in both the left and right battery, ensuring the polarity is correct. Now we can go ahead and drop in the two 3D printed battery mounting brackets, which are also secured using M2 screws. And this is what the battery should look like when fully secured in their respective brackets. A very tidy package and well designed. Now all we need to do is prep the rear shell by installing the cartridge shielding. This comes from our donor Game Boy Color and is simply secured with four 4mm M2 screws. Then drop in the power button cover, which is just the brightness button for the SP. And then install the rear shell and button everything up. And lastly, press fit the volume dial into the potentiometer. And there you have it, the Frog Boy Color fully assembled. I am so amazed with just how smoothly this went together. I have to say that I was a bit worried about getting the boards pre-assembled, but PCBWay really did an astounding job and it worked perfectly on the first shot. And the final result is stunning. Chris did an absolutely amazing job with this project and honestly, it's incredibly refined. It does have a few quirks, which we'll get into in just a moment. So for now, let's go over all of its features. So to start off, this is essentially a fully functioning Game Boy Color with the exception of the IR port. This is something that was omitted in this particular version of the kit, but Chris says it may be added in a future iteration. The wide body form factor aesthetically looks amazing and feels great in the hands thanks to its smooth contours and overall rounded shape. The Frog Boy's footprint is actually about the same size as the Game Boy Pocket, but thinner, making it considerably more compact than the original Game Boy Color, which is pretty awesome. 
Around front, it sports dual speakers that get reasonably loud, definitely louder than a regular Game Boy Color, but not super loud like you would get from an amped modded console. And of course here we have the hard to miss volume wheel. I feel like this is a pretty polarizing design choice and certainly it's a conversation starter at a minimum. I'm not entirely sure how I feel about it, but it does make for easy on the fly adjustments to the volume. I will be discussing this more in the pros and cons section of the video. We of course have the dual internal lithium ion batteries that are charged through the USB-C port on top with LED indicators letting you know when it's charging. It has a combined capacity of 1400 milliamp hours, which should give you plenty of battery life in between charges. All the buttons are tactile and feel great. The repositioning of the start and select buttons on top are great and easy to reach. Around back, it has very smooth curves and a fully exposed cartridge slot that makes it easy to showcase the label of the game you're playing. And lastly, on the bottom, we have the 3.5mm headphone jack, which of course works great, along with a recessed power button which helps to prevent accidental presses. Alright, I think we can all agree that the Frog Boy has a fantastic form factor and some truly unique design choices. So with that, let's take a look at the pros and cons. Starting with the pros, firstly I want to talk about the design. I absolutely love it. It just feels incredible in the hands with its supple contours, smooth edges, and well-designed button placement. It just feels right and honestly looks great too. Charging the console is also super simple and convenient with the integrated USB-C port and LED indicators. For a first chop at a completely redesigned Game Boy Color, inside and out, Chris really nailed it. On top of that, he made the project open source, so anyone can make one for themselves and even iterate and improve on the design. Also, the way he integrated the laminated display is fantastic, leveraging the curves of the glass lens to influence the curves of the shell, matching the design language of the original console. Overall, the Frog Boy has a ton to love about it, but there are a few things that I'd love to see updated in the next iteration, which brings me to the cons. Now before I get into it, please keep in mind that the Frog Boy Color is pretty much a one-man project. Chris has done an absolutely incredible job, and he is treating this as an ongoing project, so I'm sure that many of these issues will be addressed in a future iteration. So with that, let's talk about probably the most polarizing aspect of the handheld, which is the volume wheel. I have to say that I'm not in love with the location, and on occasion I have accidentally moved it during game sessions. It's certainly not the worst thing in the world, but I think that either moving it to a different location or making it lower profile would certainly help. On the other side of the coin, I do kind of like the quirkiness of the design with its unconventional location. Anyway, another issue that I ran into is with the cart connector. When inserting a game, the cart sticks out quite a bit. This doesn't impede the performance or comfort and is actually easily fixed by loosening the bottom two screws of the metal shielding. But it would be great to see a permanent solution integrated into the next iteration of the shell design. The next con has to do with the power button. It's a bit too recessed, making it fairly difficult to press. I can still get it to turn on and off, and I know this was purposely designed this way to prevent accidental presses, but I think perhaps a normal sliding switch or some other design would make this a bit better. Also, as with a lot of these form factor conversion projects, the IR capability was not brought over. This isn't too much of a deal breaker for me personally as I rarely use the feature, but I can see some Game Boy Color purists having reservations about this. And lastly, this is a difficult project to pull off. There's really no way around it. Transferring surface mounted components is no easy task and does require advanced soldering skills. Mods like this will always require this type of work to some extent, and if you're just getting into the hobby, I definitely would not recommend starting off with this project. If you're dead set on getting a frog boy color and lack the necessary experience, I would try to get the build commissioned instead of risking irreversible damage to your Game Boy Color's components. Now I know it sounds like that I just listed off a bunch of cons here and that I'm being hard on the frog boy color, but I don't want you to take it like I'm attacking it. This is an incredible project done by one person. Is it perfect? No. But is it amazing? Heck yeah. Chris has done something incredible here with the Frog Boy Color, and I cannot wait to see how it evolves. Well, folks, there you have it. The Frog Boy Color, a new way to enjoy your Game Boy Color library. Now, if you enjoyed this video, I really think you'll like this one here, so check it out. And as always, thank you all so much for tuning in today, and I'll catch you again next time.